Hello, and welcome to Really Big Hat. My name is Jared, and this is D&D Builds, the show where we build D&D characters step by step. This episode, we're covering the Hunter, Ranger, Gunner. As you can see here, I have Eberron content and optional class features engaged. Both of them will be necessary for this build. For our race, I have gone with Variant Human. Let's get such a number of features right off the bat. First off, we learn one language of our choice. Pick whatever you want here, it's going to be campaign and character dependent, so pick something that suits both of those things for you. We also get an ability score increase, where two different ability scores of our choice increase by one. I've gone with dexterity and constitution. We gain proficiency in one skill of our choice. I've gone with sleight of hand, but pick whatever you want here. And for our feet, I have gone with gunner. We increase our dexterity score by 1 to a maximum of 20. We gain proficiency with firearms. We ignore the loading property of firearms, so once we get extra attack, we can actually use that feature. And being within 5 feet of a hostile creature doesn't impose disadvantage on our ranged attack rolls. For our starting class, we're going with Ranger, and the very first thing we're going to want to do is go into Optional Feature Manager and click everything down here on. So, at first level of Ranger, there is actually a lot to unpack here. First, we get the Deft Explorer feature, which replaces the Natural Explorer feature. And it gets a number of abilities as we gain Ranger levels. At first level, we get Canny, where we can choose one of our skill proficiencies, and our proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check we make that uses the chosen skill. In other words, we get expertise with one skill. We also learn two languages. For the skill, I've gone with Perception. I'm getting that from my background, which we will get to in a moment. We also get the Favored Foe feature, which replaces Favored Enemy and works with the Foe Slayer feature. When we hit a creature with an attack roll, we can call on our Mystical Bond with Nature to mark the target as our Favored Enemy for one minute or until we lose our concentration, as if we were concentrating on a spell. The first time on each of our turns that we hit the favorite enemy and deal damage to it, including when we mark it, we can increase that damage by 1d4. We can use this feature to mark a favorite enemy a number of times equal to our proficiency bonus, and we regain all expended units uses when we finish a long rest. This feature's extra damage increases when we reach certain levels in this class to 1d6 at 6th level and 1d8 at 14th level. And last but not least, we gain proficiency with light armor, medium armor, and shields. Simple and Martial Weapons, Strength and Dexterity Saving Throws, and we can pick three skills. I have gone with Stealth, Survival, and Insight. For our ability scores, I have once again gone with a point by. I haven't put anything in Strength, leaving it at 8. I brought Dexterity up to a 14, which, just for this, will give us a total of 15, but once the Gunner feature applies, we'll bring that up to 16. I brought Constitution up to 15 for a total of 16, Intelligence up to 10, Wisdom up to 14, and Charisma up to 10. For our background, this is, as always, completely up to you. Read through all of the backgrounds, pick something that speaks to how you envision role-playing your character. I've gone with Sailor. That gets us proficiencies with athletics and perception, and proficiencies with navigator's tools and water vehicles. For our starting equipment, I have gone with Leather Armor, two short swords, an explorer's pack, and picked up the longbow and the quiver of 20 arrows. Now, depending on your campaign and your DM's preferences, you may or may not be allowed to start out with a firearm. They are pretty expensive, and depending on the setting, can be pretty rare, so that's really going to be campaign dependent on whether or not you're allowed to start with a pistol or a musket or what have you, however your DM is handling firearms. We also get some sailor starting equipment, a belaying pin, 50 feet of silk rope, a rabbit foot, set of common clothes, and a pouch containing 10 gold pieces. So, let's take a look at our character sheet at level 1. We've got 13 hit points, 14 armor class, proficiency in 6 skills, and expertise in 1, strength and dexterity saving throws, proficiency with light armor, medium armor, and shields, firearms, martial and simple weapons, a couple of tools from our background, and four languages. And you can also see in actions over here, I've loaded up both a longbow and a musket so you can see the difference. Basically, the longbow has much greater range, but the musket has more power. At level 2 of Ranger, we get to pick a fighting style, and I have gone with Archery. This gets us a plus 2 bonus to attack rolls we make with ranged weapons. This includes firearms. At level 2, we also get access to spell casting, and we will have two known spells. I have picked up Absorb Elements and Zephyr Strike. 
with the more limited range of firearms compared to something like a longbow, Zephyr Strike is a great way to make up that distance and give yourself a little bit of extra oomph on your first hit. At third level of Ranger, we gain the Primal Awareness feature, which replaces the Primeval Awareness feature. We learn certain spells at certain Ranger levels, they don't count against our spells known, and we can cast each of them once without expending a spell slot. Then we need to finish a long rest before we cast them again in that way. At third level of Ranger, we also get to pick a Ranger archetype, and of course, given the name of the character, we're going with Hunter. We get to choose a Hunter's Prey, and I have picked up Colossus Slayer. If we attack an enemy that is below its hit point maximum, we deal an extra 1d8 damage. We can only do this damage once per turn. At this level, we also learn a new spell, and I have gone with Hunter's Mark. At level 4 of Ranger, we get an ability score improvement, and I'm going to use that to improve our dexterity. At level 5 of Ranger, we get the extra attack feature, allowing us to attack twice instead of once whenever we take the attack action on our turn. And remember, we have the gunner feet, so we ignore the loading property of any firearms with that loading property, so we can still attack twice instead of once when we take our attack action. At level 5 of Ranger, we learn another spell and have access to second level spells, and I have selected Pass Without Trace, an excellent stealth support spell. At level 6 of Ranger, we now get the Roving feature from Deft Explorer. Our walking speed increases by 5, and we gain a climbing speed and a swimming speed equal to our walking speed. At level 7 of Ranger, we get to pick a defensive tactic, and I have gone with multi-attack defense. When a creature hits us with an attack, we gain a plus 4 bonus to AC against all subsequent attacks made by that creature for the rest of the turn. At this level, we also learn another spell, and I have gone with Spike Growth. At level 8 of Ranger, we get an ability score improvement, and I'm going to use that to cap off our dexterity. At level 9 of Ranger, we get access to third level spells, and I have selected Lightning Arrow. This is a nice little buff to our ranged weapon attacks, whether it's coming out of a firearm, being launched out of a bow and arrow, or even thrown with a dagger. It really doesn't matter. It's a nice, unique, versatile spell. At level 10 of Ranger, we gain the Tireless feature from Death Explorer. As an action, we can give ourselves a number of temporary hit points equal to 1d8 plus our Wisdom modifier. We can use this action a number of times equal to our proficiency bonus, and we regain all expended uses when we finish a long rest. In addition, whenever we finish a short rest, we drop one exhaustion level if we have any. At level 10 of Ranger, we also gain Nature's Veil, which replaces the Hide in Plain Sight feature. We draw on the power of nature to hide ourselves from view briefly. As a bonus action, we can become magically invisible, along with any equipment we're wearing or carrying, until the start of our next turn. We can use this feature a number of times equal to our proficiency bonus, and we regain all expended uses when we finish a long rest. At level 11 of Hunter, we get to choose a multi-attack, and I have selected Volley. We can use our action to make a ranged attack against any number of creatures within 10 feet of a point we can see within our weapon's range. We must have ammunition for each target, as normal, and we must make a separate attack roll for each target. This is a really cool feature that can really spread out a lot of damage if your enemies are clumped together. At this level, we also learn another spell, and I have gone with Conjure Barrage. This is a fun little spell that can turn whatever ranged weapon we're using, or whatever firearm, into a shotgun with a 60-foot cone. It's a lot of fun. At level 12 of Ranger, we get an ability score improvement, and I am going to use this to take the Sharpshooter feat. I know it's a little bit late in a build for Sharpshooter, but hey, better late than never. Attacking at long range doesn't impose disadvantage on our ranged weapon attack rolls. Our ranged weapon attacks ignore half cover and three quarters cover, and before we make an attack with a ranged weapon that we're proficient with, we can choose to take a minus five penalty to the attack roll, and if the attack hits, we add plus ten to the attack's damage. This adds a lot of power to our ranged weapon attacks, and improves our versatility at long range. At level 13 of Ranger, we get access to fourth level spells, and I have selected Guardian of Nature. This is a nice little buff, especially for us, we want to focus on Great Tree. We gain 10 temporary hit points, we make constitution saving throws with advantage, we make dexterity and wisdom based attack rolls with advantage, and while we're on the ground, the ground within 15 feet of us is difficult terrain for our enemies. It's a very cool buff for a ranged combatant. 
At level 14 of Ranger, we gain the Vanish feature. We can use the Hide action as a bonus action, and we cannot be tracked by non-magical means unless we choose to leave a trail. At level 15 of Hunter, we get Superior Hunter's Defense, and I am going to use that to pick up Evasion. When we are subjected to an effect such as a Red Dragon's Fiery Breath or a Lightning Bolt spell that allows us to make a Dexterity saving throw to take only half damage, we instead take no damage if we succeed, and only half damage if we fail. At this level, we also learn another spell, and I'm going to go with Freedom of Movement. At level 16 of Ranger, we get an Ability Score Improvement, and I'm going to use that to improve our Constitution. At level 17 of Ranger, we get access to 5th level spells, and I am going to stay on theme as a Gunner and pick up Conjure Volley. We can now shoot our gun into the air and rain down death with like hundreds of bullets covering an area 40 foot radius, 20 foot high cylinder. That is a lot of coverage for our weapon. At level 18 of Ranger, we gain Feral Senses. We have preternatural senses that help us fight creatures we can't see. When we attack a creature we can't see, our inability to see it doesn't impose disadvantage on our attack rolls against it. We are also aware of the location of any invisible creature within 30 feet of us, provided that the creature isn't hidden from us and that we aren't blinded or deafened. At 19th level of Ranger, we get another ability score improvement, and I'm going to use this to take the tough feat in order to give our hit points a nice boost. At this level, we also learn another spell, and I'm going to use that to pick up Tree Stride, a nice, unique little mobility spell that can really change the tide of a battle if we use it properly. At level 20 of Ranger and our capstone for this build, we gain Foe Slayer. We become an unparalleled hunter of our enemies. Once on each of our turns, we can add our Wisdom modifier to the attack roll or the damage roll of an attack we make against one of our favored enemies. We can choose to use this feature before or after the roll, but before any of the effects of the roll are applied. So, now that the build is complete, let's take a look at our character at level 20 and see what we've got. We've got a whopping 244 HP which is not bad. We have a lot of staying power. We've got 17 armor class if we've upgraded to non-magical studded leather, which is, as always, a little low for this uh, for a level 20 character. We still have that proficiency in six different skills. We've got strength and dexterity saving throws, both of which are pretty good. The rest of our saves are pretty subpar, though. We have a passive perception of 24, which isn't bad. Still have those four languages, the couple of tools, proficiencies in firearms, all the weapons, and light, medium armor, and shields. We could always upgrade to medium armor, like half plate or something, but we don't really have the strength for that, so I have chosen not to do so. We have a number of different features that we can use in combat. We have our longbow and our musket here that you can see the stats of, and we have Nature's Veil that we can use to become magically invisible. Vanish to use the Hide as a bonus action. We have our Colossus Slayer to do extra damage to anything below its HP maximum. We have Favorite Foe. We have Foe Slayer. Uh, we have our Gunner feature. If we look over at our spells, we have a lot of stuff that can help us. Absorb Elements can have the damage of an elemental attack. And with our HP, we could tank multiple Dragon's Breaths pretty handily. We have Hunter's Mark and Zephyr Strike to help with damage output and mobility, respectively, but also Z Zephyr Strike also helps with damage. Uh, we have Pass Without Trace as, as a good stealth support sp skill. Spike Growth is a nice little battlefield control spell. Conjure Barrage is a lot of fun. We can, you know, just whip out our gun and shoot a shotgun blast. Lightning Arrow is a lot of fun. Turn our bullet into a bolt of lightning. Freedom of movement is always clutch when it's useful. You're always glad you had it rather than not. Guardian of nature is a good one. Uh, I went over that in the build, and it's it's got a lot of helpful buffs for a ranged combatant. Uh, commune with nature, conjure volley, tree stride, all a lot of fun fifth level spells here. And for our features, we have all of these uh, Deft Explorer features, canny, roving, tireless. Again, there's our favorite foe. We have a archery fighting style, improving our attack rolls we make with ranged weapons. That pairs pretty well with sharpshooter, which we'll get to later. We have our primal awareness, which is giving us these five spells here that we can use once per long rest. 
We have, again, there's Colossus Slayer. There's our martial versatility that we can use. That's up to you when you want to use it when you're leveling up. Uh, we have our tough feet, extra attack. We have multi-attack defense. We have land stride here, nature's veil. There's vanish again, our superior hunter's defense for evasion, feral senses. There's foe slayer again. And for our racial traits, we did get the gunner feet. We got proficiency in a skill, a language, and some ability score increases. And for our feats, we have Sharpshooter, Tough, and Gunner. So we have a lot of tools at our disposal with this character. A lot of fun spells that improve our ranged combat and give us various buffs or other features. We've got pretty good stats, good dex and con. We've got a good walking speed in 35, which is you know, above the baseline 30, so that's always helpful. We also have a climbing and a swimming speed from one of our ranger features, which helps us get around a lot of different battlefields. And with our massive HP pool and all of the ranged combat that we're going to be doing and probably staying out of the bulk of the line of fire ourselves, we're a pretty stocky character that can really lay down the hurt from afar. It's a fun build. I hope you have fun with it. But with that all out of the way, I will see you guys next time. Later.